He says we need to think about building longer tables, not higher walls, and the world will be a better place. And no one has done more to help build a better world than Chef Jose Andres. He moved to the U.S. with just $50 in his pocket and a dream to bring his passion for Spanish cuisine and his love of food to the world. I would like to go back to the beginning, Spain, where you grew up. What was it about the foods that you grew up with, the flavors, the spices, that in inspired you to become the chef you are today? I was born in the north of Spain, but I left uh, that region when I was roughly four or five. My mom, my dad, they were nurses. We moved into a little town uh, outside Barcelona in the mountains. Um, surrounded by cherry trees. I began being almost like an immigrant in my own country. Different languages, different foods, different smells. Obviously, the traditional dishes of Catalonia, the beautiful pork sausages grilled in the middle of the town when there were mm. celebrations, because the Catalan people love to celebrate about anything. <laughs> any normal day, mm -hmm. any Monday, any Tuesday, will be like an event. We will go for the bread in the morning. We'll go with a bike to buy to the little fish store. And those smells, but more important, those moments of sharing, of celebration. This is, I guess, the cook uh, I became. I can see it. We can visualize it. It's amazing. It's in your soul. But your parents, as you mentioned, nurses in the medical field. So how was it that you ended up making that transition? Because really, food, sustenance, it's very much giving. It's very much the same growing up in hospitals, waiting for my mother to take me home or for my father to take me home. And I always saw them and people like them, that they always go the extra mile. With a smile, with reading a book to a child waiting for the family or taking an elderly lady for a walk. These little moments in life that these people giving their best, when nobody's watching, that is what makes who we are, makes the society, the humanity that we are. You have done more for the world food hunger than any one person in the history <laughs> of the world. 60 million meals so far. Let's be honest. I think more, I think more by now. We, we, reach, we reach probably, we are in our way 200. Wow. Uh, probably passing it. I mean, we've been doing this now for yes. for over 11, 12 years. Right. But, but World Central Kitchen was, was the necessity I saw of having people like me responding to emergencies. When you need to take care of the wounded, you send doctors and nurses. When you need to stop a fire, you, you, serve, you send firefighters. Mm -hmm. If you need to feed people, it wouldn't make uh, sense that who takes care of feeding people will be cooks mm -hmm. like me. I was in Cayman Island, and seen on TV the destruction that happened after the 2010 earthquake in Haiti. Yeah. That moment, I thought, I'm not gonna be watching anymore. I need to understand how my knowledge and the knowledge of my profession can be a true agent of change. I flew into Haiti, mm -hmm. and I went to a camp, and I began feeding with the help of local NGOs. Very quickly, I realized that yes, that if cooks like me, we show up, we can be making the most out of any situation. Why? Because cooks, we are very resourceful. We work well under stress because kitchens and restaurants can be stressful places when everybody wants to eat at the same time. Sometimes big problems, they have very simple solutions. The solution is you start walking, start doing boots on the ground. That's how World Central Kitchen came to be. So did you feel that you were very prepared because you had gone into acute situations, but then the pandemic happens? Do you feel like we're in a better place as a world now, knowing how to feed people better, that everybody was involved, not just Haiti or where, you know, New Orleans, where, there's, where there were crises? Pandemic was very clear to me that pff, this was going to be what it became. Food that we take for granted, all of the time was not there for oh. everybody that needed it. Yeah. I was announcing my restaurants were closing, but I was reopening them as community kitchens. Before we knew, we put more than 3,000 restaurants across America at work. Before we knew, World Central Kitchen was not only in the States, but we were in many countries. Before we knew, we were doing like 500,000 meals a day. What we did was simple. I, the person, does nothing. We, the people, can do everything. 
for me gives me a lot of joy that in this difficult hour, the cooks of the world put their kitchens at the service of taking care of the people that needed to be fed. And this is the good story of COVID, but we are ill prepared. Yeah. Food, we take it for granted. Mm -hmm. Food may be plentiful today, but still we are not able to feed many. But maybe one day food will not be plentiful. And then hunger will become not a big issue, but will become the, the only issue. issue. I feel that food should stop being the problem, but become the solution. With food, we can end hunger. With food, we can take care of the health of people. With food, we create jobs. With food, we can help fight climate change. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, food is the solution to many of the issues we are facing. It's very apparent why you were nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize, and I do believe that you will win one before long, absolutely. You give so much to the world. How do you have time to do all this? I do a lot of things with the same thing in same mind. Same focus in mind. Let me yeah. provide for my daughters, let have my family in a good place, but understanding that my families are gonna be in a better place if all of us together, we fight to make sure that everybody has a place to belong, has a plate of food on the table. That's, that's not building walls. This is building longer tables. Yes, enjoy life every single moment. I do enjoy life. And I open my bottles of champagne and, <laughs> and I cook for friends. <clears throat> Sometimes more food than we should be cooking. <laughs> but it's okay to also keep a part of your brain remembering that. Yeah. It's more to be done. And that's why I try to be in different areas because I'm learning. When we see the world as what it is, a beautiful place where everything and people is interconnected, all of a sudden maybe we have a chance to fix things and make problems into true solutions. Uh, that's why I'm hoping uh, we will all do more in the years to come. Well, one thing's for sure, the world is a better place because you are in it and for what you're doing for everybody. So thank you so much. And thank you for taking the time to talk to us here. And uh, we are behind you 100%. Be kind to each other. Yes. Sure. <laughs> yes, you can. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Bye.